Now we come to the hind limb. Okay? The first thing to mention regarding the hind limb is that the first joint in the hind limb is the sacroiliac joint. It is the articulation between the sacrum and the ilium. This is an actual conventional joint with synovial filled fluid uh, joint capsule. This is different from the ferris joint that we have seen in the forelimb because the forelimb attached to the trunk through muscles, through the sensarcosis muscles. So in the forelimb, there is no conventional joint like bone to bone and that articulation is enclosed within a joint capsule. The attachment is only through the muscles. When we come to the hind limb, the ferris joint is the sacroiliac joint. It is a conventional articulation, bone to bone, sacrum to the ilium, with a joint capsule surrounding the synovial cavity. And this joint range of motion is very limited. So this joint is, is, doesn't move that much in terms of flexion, extension, circumduction. So because the joint is, is covered by a fibrous connective tissue, so it's an instability joint in a state of a moving joint. Bear that in mind. So the ferris joint in the hind limb is the uh, sacroiliac joint, it's the conventional, uh, synovial, and also a fibrous uh, joint, very limited in movement. The second joint is the hip joint. The third joint is the stifle joint. Joint number four is the tarsal joint, and then we have the digital joint that are very similar to the ones that we have seen in the, in the, in the fall. This is the one. Number two, a major difference between the forelimb and the hind limb is in the flexion angles. We said to know the flexion angle is key to understand the action of each group of muscles. So let us start with the hip joint. The flexion angle of the hip joint is this angle here in front of the joint axis. The flexion angle of the stifle joint is in the caudal aspect of the joint axis. The flexion angle of the torsal joint is in the cranial aspect here. And the flexion angle of the digital joint is on the plantar surface of the hind paw. Now, this will tell you what, that the flexion angles of the hind limb is alternating, which means for the hip joint is in front of the joint, for the stifle, it is in the back of the joint. For the tarsal, it is in front of the joint. And for the digital joint, it's on the plantar aspect of, of the joint. Now, let us go to the level of the carpus and the digits. In the forelimb, we have seen that all the muscles that act on the carpus and extend to cover the digital joint also act on the digital joint. And we have seen that the extensors of the carpus that has to go to the level of the digit, they also extend the digits. In the hind limb, because the flexion angles are different, because the flexion angle of the tarsal is in front of the joint, and the one of the digits is on the plantar aspect, that is, the extensors of the tarsal joint are flexors of the digital joint. And the extensors of the tarsal joints are flexors of the digital joint. And this is why, because of the location of the flexion angle. When I say the muscle that extend the tarsal flex the digits, I'm talking about the muscle that extend beyond the tarsal joint, which means they act on the tarsal joint and also they act on the digital joint. Uh, I think by now we have the understanding that if the muscle crosses more than one joint, it will act on all these joints, but it will exert its most action on the most distal joint.
Now, let us go to the level of, of the thigh. And let us take the muscle that located on the caudal aspect of the thigh. Namely, it is the biceps muscle, this huge muscle here, the semitendinous muscle, or the semitendinosus muscle, and the most medial one, the semimembranosus muscle. Okay, let us start with this muscle. Now, the biceps is the huge muscle. And the biceps is originate from the ischiatic tuberosity of the pelvic bone. And it has more than one insertion. It will insert through fascia to the cranial aspect of the patella and the patellar ligament. It also has an insertion on the tibial tuberosity. And also it has an insertion to the calcaneus tuberosity or the calcaneus within the common calcaneus tendon. So the biceps crosses the hip joint, it crosses the stifle joint, and also it crosses the tarsal joint, which means it acts on the hip joint, it acts on the stifle joint, and it acts on the tarsal joint. We said the muscle, when it crosses more than one joint, it will exert most of its action on the most distal one. If you look at the biceps, it's a huge muscle. It's a big, it's a big muscle. It has a considerable effect on the hip joint. It has a considerable action and effect on the movement of the stifle joint. And also it has a most uh, uh, decent effect on the tarsal joint. So, for the hip joint, the biceps is an extensor of the hip joint because when it contracts, it will increase this angle here. Okay. For the stifle joint, the part that inserts dorsal or cranial uh, proximal to the stifle, when this part contracts, which is the cranial part of the biceps, this will tend to extend the stifle. And the part that attached to the distal end or the distal area uh, of the patellar ligament and the part that attached to the tibia, this part, when it contracts, it will flex the stifle bone. That means what? That means it acts as a synergist, as a helper. Like when the stifle is extended, it will help with the extension of the stifle. When the stifle is flexed, it will help with the flexion of, of the stifle. And the part that attach to the calcaneus through the common calcanean tendon, it will extend the tarsal joint. So for the biceps, femoris, it will extend the hip joint. It will extend or flex the stifle joint, and it will extend the tarsal joint. The second muscle is the one that is located here, and this is the semitendinosus muscle. And the semitendinosus muscle also originates from the ischiatic tuberosity, okay? And it inserts on the distocranial portion of, of the TB. And the action of the semitendinosus is to extend the hip joint. So it is an extensor of the hip joint. Also, because of its insertion, it will help with the flexion of the stifle joint. So the semitendinosus will act as extensor of the hip joint, and it will act as a synergist or a helper in flexion of the stifle joint. The third one we're gonna talk about, okay? It is the most medial one. It is this one here, okay? This is the semimembranous 
membranosus muscle. It is this one here, and it has two bellies. Don't get confused about that. This is one belly, and this is another, and this is another belly. Okay? Bear in mind, the semimembranosus, it has two bellies. Okay? Let me expose it more so you can see it better. Okay? This is one belly of the semimembranosus, and this is the other belly of the semimembranosus. Okay? Now, the semimembranosus originate from the ischiatic tuberosity. Okay? Very similar to the origin of the semitendinosus and to the origin of the, of the biceps. Now, it inserts where? It inserts on the medial aspect of, of the femur. Okay? And also it go to the medial epicondyle of, of the tibia. So the semimembranosus, it is coming from the ischiatic tuberosity. It will go to the medial proximal part of the tibia. And also it will gonna go to the medial part of the, of the femur. Okay? Now, when we come to the action of the semimembranosus, okay? The semimembranosus will extend the hip joint. So, the biceps, an extensor of the hip joint. The semitendinosus is an extensor of the hip joint. The semimembranosus is an extensor of the hip joint. So, all the muscles that located on the caudal aspect of the thigh, namely the biceps, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus, with it is both belly, they act as extensors of the hip joint. Now, if we look at the insertion of the semimembranosus on the medial aspect of the femur and it is attachment to the tibia, also it will help in flexing of the stifle joint. So, the semimembranosus will act as an extensor of the hip joint and as an synergist in flexion of the stifle joint. This is the caudal muscles of the, of the thigh or the feet. Now, let us go to the medial muscles, the muscles that located on the medial side of the femur or the medial side of the thigh.